Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Recycle, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. In this video, we'll be covering the developments that happened over 2019, so you can get a 30,000 foot view of what's been going on and decide which one of my videos you wanna investigate on further. The turn of last year began with the announcement of Muse 2. This was the highly anticipated follow-up to the original Muse that was released in 2014 with an update in 2016. I was able to talk to Dr. Graham Moffitt, their chief of research, who emphasized the company's strategy of keeping the overall meditation structure similar while changing the look a bit, adding gold EEG surface receptors, a PPG pulse detector, and then also acquiring a software company to really take the Muse app to a new level, both of the new Muse 2 features and the EEG features that are still available on the original Muse. Now notably, there were some initial hiccups with Bluetooth connectivity issues on some of the Muse 2 headbands, but the company responded beautifully to customer complaints and feedback and refunded any defective devices. They seem to be back on track with the release of their Muse Sleep and Yoga Soft Band that is coming very soon. And as of now, the end of 2019, it's important to note that the Muse 2 is also compatible with the MindLift neurofeedback system. This was not the case in the past. This year's been absolutely huge for research regarding mobile EEG devices. At one point, I made a spoof video about Muse being comparable to a medical grade EEG device, according to a paper that I had read online. Then I actually got to talk with the scientist that headed up and wrote the paper. His name's Dr. Kug Olson, and he's a neuroscientist at the University of Victoria. Dr. Kug Olson's been around the mobile EEG research field since the early days of Interaxon and got to see initial testing with Buddhist monks and expert meditators so that Interaxon could create their meditation app using machine learning. What Dr. Kug Olson did independently at his lab at University of Victoria that was so powerful for Interaxon and the Muse community is that he compared the Muse headband in a head-to-head -head scientific standoff between the Muse headband and the quote-unquote gold standard of EEG technology used for medical and research purposes, the $80,000 ActiChamp system. His 2017 paper was able to show that the Muse performed just as well as the system that cost five times, 500 times more relative to the number of sensors used. They used a canary in the coal mine test called an evoked related potential and showed that the waveforms between the two devices were very similar. I semi-spoofed this research with a funny video about a heckler giving me trouble in the woods over seriously considering these devices for medical practice and research. Dr. Kugolson took this knowledge and created an app called Aspire that tests cognition and it's currently being used with NASA for the Mars Reconnaissance Mission in Hawaii. Now for the tools that are readily available for your EEG research, the Muse Direct program is certainly worth taking a look at. Here you can seamlessly record EEG data in any experiment and upload it to the cloud instantly. At $4 a month, it's totally affordable. I'm currently using it with PTSD research, taking a look at a PTSD treatment called stellate ganglion block. And as of this video recording, the Muse Direct program is up and running, despite their software development kit still being on the back burner. The meditation practitioners out there might get a big kick out of Muse Monitor, a third-party app by James Clutterbuck that I reviewed in this video. The Muse Facebook community is using it a lot to record their meditation sessions, upload it to the cloud, and share with others to interpret the data. This past year was also a big advance in looking at meditation techniques to use with the Muse headband. We reviewed the Mind Illuminated and started applying these timeless meditation techniques to our Muse headband practice. I really feel that the Sanskrit terms in this book describe meditation techniques beautifully, and it was really applicable to what we were doing in my Muse Meditation Neurofeedback Circuit Training program. I couldn't think of a better book to read when diving into Muse Meditation. That being said, I felt that the Chakra Review and Meditation Techniques in Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza have been really helpful in shaping that program as well. One of the things you can do with these techniques is apply it to the Muse Meditation app and then also use it with the MindLift Neurofeedback to really supercharge your brain. I put out the MindLift Review 2 video and we dived into the specifics of how to use the neurofeedback system that I use with my clients. Now recently, MindLift updated their software for me to use with my 2020 clients and the big improvement is shown in this video in which you can use a Venn diagram to help you guide your own session in real time according to specific brain waves as well as other reporting techniques that the practitioner can use to report improvements to their clients. 
I should also mention that we spoke to the CEO of MindLift and an affiliated company called Brain Boost, who really gave a great overview of the future of neurofeedback and specifics on how MindLift was actually developed. In the very specific but huge potential niche of neurofeedback meditation research, we got a wealth of information this past year. As a background primer, we dove into graph theory and brain connectomics to get an idea of where big data and neuroscience are headed together. This information will be used in everything from high performance meditation research to the diagnosis of mental illness. We dove into Daniel Goleman and Richard Davidson's meditation research in their book, Altered Traits, which has to do with looking at brain scans and other technology to understand meditation. And some of the big relevations from that book include the brain continuously evolves through neuroplasticity for a lifetime of meditation and includes amazing findings in Buddhist monks and professional lifelong meditators to include gamma wave bursts, heightened compassion response, greater pain tolerance, and a host of other exciting findings. Brain patterns such as the default mode network, hyperfrontality, frontal lobe asymmetry, and gamma wave coherence are increasingly becoming recognized terms in the self-development field. To further round out our meditation knowledge in regards to neurofeedback, we spoke to Dr. John Torres and Marty Woodkey about their experiences in the field over the past decades. Dr. John Torres has really specialized in nicely explaining different meditation types with specific functions to include focus, open heart, mindfulness, and quiet mind. And he's working very hard to advance the field where he's based there in Oregon. And what can I say about Marty Woodkey? Simply a very seasoned veteran of neurofeedback practitioners and meditation who emphasizes a comprehensive self-development meditation program in conjunction with neurofeedback with brainwave stabilization before ascending to higher levels of enlightenment. And let's not forget our reviews of new devices on the market. I had a lot of fun taking a look at the South Korean OmniFit brain device, and I'm looking forward to reviewing the new Xi, the only personal EEG device that I know of that has a camera in it and should be available on the market soon. As for neurostimulation, I was honored to interview Dr. Daniel Chow of Halo Neuroscience and released a review video on the Halo Sport 2 talking about the potential of neurostimulation for enhancement of exercise and sports performance. And what's really interesting is that the company is taking a serious look at neurostimulation for focus and meditation purposes as well. And now, wouldn't that be amazing? And to wrap things up, it's been a huge year for biometric wearable devices. All the big tech companies are getting into the game to include Facebook, Google, and Apple. Who knows what biometric data we'll be able to get from these devices very soon. I caught up with the head of Google Health, Dr. David Feinberg, who actually graduated from my alma mater. He's bringing the company into the technology space for even biometrics to play with. And finally, I got to see a real life infrared spectroscopy wearable that is the start of a fruitful future for this type of technology. As I've said multiple times on this channel, infrared spectroscopy with reliable blood flow tracking will be a whole new level for neurofeedback and brain computer interface devices. Couple that with EEG recordings and we're gonna start having some really incredibly powerful wearable devices soon to interact with the brain. And finally, I announced my neurofeedback program and started rolling it out to to select clients this past year. This year I'm going to be bringing a lot more people into the program and I can't wait to see what the new year brings. Please take a look at the links below for further investigation into these topics on Tech Recyc. This is Dr. Cody Rawl, see you next time.